today I'm going to show you how I use collage papers to create the first layer of a mixed media project. When using collage, I like to have everything ready set up all around me on my table ready to go. Here's a canvas board. I'm grabbing a couple of brushes, a normal old paintbrush because I'm going to put glue on it and a sponge brush for spreading the glue around on the canvas board. Here in my little Mac making toolbox, I'm looking for something with a straight edge to go over the papers that I've glued down to make sure that they're really stuck down properly. This old kitchen utensil, a spatula, is really handy for this. And here I've made my gel medium to use as glue. And here my little collection of collage papers. A ruler and some scissors for cutting if needs be. And when I'm working small like this on my desk, I like to light a little candle, set the ambience ready to start my creation. Here are some kind of booklets of collage papers that you can buy. Often people buy me these as gifts for birthdays and things like that. So I've got a really nice collection. So all ready to go. It's really nice to have everything set up on hand all around you. Just checking out my collage papers, deciding which ones I'm going to use. This is one of my favorites, an old gardening book. You can tear the pages out, use the pictures or even use the text. Magazines are great too. Here's one of my kids' old wildlife magazines. Whenever it's anybody's birthday, everybody always saves me the wrapping paper. And here's a music sheet printed out. I think it's one of my daughter's piano lessons. And some bought ones as well. You can get these nice shiny foil ones and florals, all sorts of designs. Here's a lovely booklet, it was a gift. I've used it a little bit and I really love these butterflies. In fact, I'm gonna use some of that to get started. I'm just flicking through my booklets, through my papers, grabbing any, anything that I feel attracted to. I'm not really thinking about where I'm going to put them yet. A blank canvas can be a bit scary sometimes. We Sometimes we don't know how, where to start, what to start with, afraid we're gonna make a mistake. So this is a really good way just to get started. Just tearing up bits of paper, choosing what goes well next to each other and sticking them down. And there you've got your first layer ready to continue, maybe paint on it afterwards, cover it up again with another piece of paper you've got your base and you're ready to move on from there going through papers and choosing what pleases me also reminds me of when I was young and I used to save up my pocket money and go every week to a shop I think it was a card shop and I used to buy a sheet one sheet sometimes too, if I was had a bit of extra money, of gift wrapping paper. And then I'd come home and I'd paste it on my bedroom wall until after a while, I don't know how long, my whole bedroom was covered in well, collage, collage to gift paper. And I can remember when I finished all of my bedroom, I then started on the ceiling and I made a what I called my graffiti ceiling. I used paint, I remember it was black paint and red paint to just write little sayings and quotes and my friends' names. Anybody who came around were allowed was allowed to put their name on the ceiling. It's really funny. I suppose I was really lucky, really, to for my parents to allow me to have this creative outlet. 
Let me know how old you were when you started your creative adventure. Were you allowed to do crazy, arty things from a young age? So I've placed some pieces down and I like where they are, so I'm going to start sticking. I'm using this Liquitex gel medium, which is great to use as glue in collage with my small paintbrush, just because it fits in the pot. And then I use the larger sponge brush. Well, it's not really a brush, but um, a sponge tool to spread the glue around before placing the papers again. In some of these straight edges as I'm working on this canvas board but if I was working on a normal canvas I would be wrapping the, the paper around the edge of the canvas to cover the sides as well. If you haven't tried this before then it's really it's really a relaxing process and if you are thinking about moving into abstract this is a great way to start first layer down and then move on from there quite a few people have been saying to me that they really want to try abstract art but they don't know where to start or how to do it so this is one of the one of the reasons why i made this video and other videos in a series that works with a principle that I created. Five easy tips on how to start abstract painting. There's five techniques of how to just get started, getting rid of that blank canvas, getting a bit of confidence and getting that first layer down. So if you fancy having a go at abstract art, I will put that in the description below and you can print it out and watch out for the videos that go alongside it. Oh, and that gives me a reminder to remind you that if you're not already subscribed and you haven't clicked the little bell, then make sure you do, then you get notifications of when I do upload a new video. Thanks for your support. So, as I've been chatting away, you've seen that I'm placing papers down next to each other. I'm moving them around. Maybe I don't like one next to the other. Just kind of using my intuition, which is how I paint anyway, to get the feeling, to decide whether I really like it and if it wants to, if I need it to stay there. or if I need to move it somewhere else. There's no rules really, just go with it, go with your feeling and enjoy the process. For the next layer, I will probably be using some paint on this, so Quite a lot of it probably will get covered up anyway and then I might go back in with some collage, I might go in with some different mark making tools. So this is just a way to get started. I've just noticed that that music paper in the top left is kind of really jumping out at me and I want to set it back. It reminds me too much of the blank, the original blank canvas. So I've just got some tissue paper and I've pasted that over. With tissue paper, it's really cool because you can just paste over with the glue and it sticks really, really easy. And you may have noticed as well, while I've been gluing one bit down, I kind of move all around the canvas, just making sure that everything's glued down properly. I like to get some text pieces in there, some pages of text. These are from French books and magazines, so they're French words. 
but I do like to get some text in there. Whether it stays or not is another story. Here I'm using the spatula to make sure all the edges are well stuck down. And then this little plastic card too. So I got to this point and I realised spinning the canvas around that the colours that I used, the papers, were all warm colours, yellows, pinks, reds. So I decided to add a little bit of cool tone with this blue tissue paper. And it's funny, it's a process that I usually use when I'm painting, when I start with, on a canvas with a great paints, I either start with cool colours or warm colours, so I suppose that process came out subconsciously in this collage. <laughs> so you can keep collage in for as much as you like. As I said, I will probably do some painting over this for my next layer. If you've seen my other paintings, you'll know that I do many, many, many layers <laughs> on my paintings. And I like to spin my canvas around at this point check to see if anything's popping out at me, anything I want to really keep, what I want to work with, and then move on from there. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you in another video. Bye for now. Au revoir.